Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the another exciting edition of MRSI Wednesday webinar. The topic we are covering today is past, present, future of online panels, what we love, hate, and fear about the panels. Now, uh, before I go in details, uh, I think market research started in India about 75 years ago, but the pace of change in last and the data collection method had remained same about till 2000, but the pace of change we have seen from the advent of internet has been tremendous. And I think the way data collection and things are happening now is very, very different from what it used to happen. So, and hence uh, today we will talk about one of the new way of collecting uh, data, which is online panels. So if I look at it, uh, about uh, during COVID, we saw lots of research moving to online panels because of the restrictions for movements. And lots of studies were getting done, about 50% were getting done, or plus 50% plus was getting done online. Uh, post uh, uh, lockdown uh, COVID, we have seen slightly decline in the number of studies being done online. It's uh, for a qualitative research, it's still about 50% research which is being done online panel through online panels. For others, quantitative research, it's between 15 to 20%. We will talk about more uh, as we go forward. Next slide. So Wednesday webinar, this is sixth season of Wednesday webinar. Wednesday webinar is uh, Please go to next slide. Yeah, Wednesday webinar, the, uh, basically there are uh, four people plus MLSI Secretariat, which works tirelessly to bring you this Wednesday webinar. Uh, uh, I, Amitabh Mishra, who head insights analytics for Dr. Reddy's, Sundar Muthuraman, CEO SL Ventures, Mukul Gautam, VP and Chief of Capacity Building, Popolo Garcity, and Jayesh Menon, Global in Director Insights at Interpret Tech. So we bring you, uh, we tirelessly work to bring you the Wednesday webinars. About MRSI, it was established in 1988. It's a not-for-profit organization for research buyers and providers uh, to create awareness about both uh, among uh, about the best practices in industry and uh, also uh, pro promote professional standards please move ahead so today uh, we have uh, four eminent speakers uh, we i'll talk about them uh, from right to left. So Nishant Kaushal, who is the CEO and founder of Adna Research. Adna Research is a Singapore headquartered a new age global research consultancy built upon a proprietary research platform that incorporates real time response from 600 million real people globally in 120 plus countries. In India, they have 39 million uh, panelists across SEC and geographies. Their clientele includes uh, largest MNCs of the world. And Adna is one of the newest uh, companies in this business, established in 2021. Uh, Nishant before that was a CCO of uh, Kantar in Singapore and Southeast Asia. Uh, coming to Ravi uh, Narayanan, he is the business development director at Dynata. Dynata is headquarters in tech Access USA is one of the world's largest first party data company for insights, activation and measurement established in 1977. Uh, it reaches to about 70 million people globally. Uh, they have a proprietary panel of about 45 in 45 country. Uh, they execute about 100 million plus online surveys every year. Dynata started its online panel in 2000 and currently serves more than 6,000 6, market research, media and advertising agency, publishers, consulting, investment firms and corporate uh, customers worldwide. In India, Dynata has 2 million plus uh, panel size. Uh, now coming to Dushyan. Dushyan is Executive Vice President of Borderless Access. Borderless Access is again a digital first market research and panel company. It was formally started in 2008. 
uh, when it bought took over the online panel of Crosstab and then expanded it to 40 plus markets uh, across the globe. Uh, today, borderless access provide connected access to 80 lakh plus uh, uh, well profile panelists across B2C, B2B and healthcare professional. It, in India, it has managed an active panel size of 15 lakh plus and has completed 1000 plus studies in just one last one year. And then coming to Samir Grover, who is the founder and CEO of Crownit. Crownit again is a tech first, mobile first research and consumer insight company. It started in India uh, with a panel size of 30 lakh plus across 50 centers. Crownit entered uh, market research in 2018 and now servicing about 120 brand enterprises. Crownit does about 2000 full service research uh, per year, all using mobile first consumer panel and proprietary research technology. So these are our panelists and their organization. Let's move ahead. So uh, we will talk about how the evolution, uh, how online research or online panel research evolved. So first online research and how panel research evolved in global and India. So uh, Ravi uh, would request you to, can you take this question? Yeah, thanks Amitabh. So we'll, get, we'll start with the global scenario. Uh, specifically, we are talking, going to talk about how it all started in the US and uh, Europe, the Western countries. For this, I requested my global research science team to provide some inputs, and I got a very uh, recent report published by the American Association of uh, Public o Opinion Research. Uh, yes, it all started in the 80s, but surprisingly, I noticed that the need, the original need was to improve data quality uh, by way of uh, removing the interviewer bias, because the original thinkers, they knew about what we call as a social desirability bias, when the investigator is there, the consumer kind of behaves in a certain manner. So they were looking for alternatives and that's why uh, they kind of thought about uh, online at this point in time. Uh, while it started in the 80s, it's only in 86, we know that uh, a, 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 a formal national panel was set up. That is the Netherlands by Dutch Gallup. The interesting point here is at this point in time, internet penetration was negligible. Computers were not there. So this organization supplied computers and modems to these uh, households to set up and get started with this. And that's how it all started. So as time passed, two things happened. On the one hand, the traditional mode, which is uh, catty telephonic or face-to-face -face or uh, those days snail mails, that was becoming more and more difficult. People are not willing to give time, uh, less efficient, less responsive, were very costly. On the other hand, internet penetration was gradually picking up which was facilitating researchers to move projects from offline to online. Uh, and we can see that the inflection happened around 2000, the dot-com time. You can see in the chart on the left-hand side, the internet penetration re reached 40%. So this is where uh, a large shift happened and a lot of people started uh, considering online as a main mode of uh, research. And of course, it progressed further into uh, uh, the smartphone coming into picture in the late 2000s or early 2010. Uh, and, and the switch happened from there. So if you can move to the next slide. I want to uh, uh, kind of recall the anecdote here. This 2019, uh, I was in touch with our global knowledge management head for working on a paper on uh, online research in India. And he's based, he was uh, based in US, he's a veteran researcher. He looked at the stats and said, uh, India is presenting an in interesting story, 2019, you can see uh, in, the, in the chart, uh, the internet penetration is reaching 41%. At that time, the adoption or the usage of online was very low. And you are wondering why is it so? So he recalled uh, precisely at this point in time, when uh, in 2000s, when internet penetration crossed 40, 40% plus, there was a large scale adoption of uh, online research that happened globally in the Western markets. So he felt that India is probably going to get into that stage where internet inter uh, online research is going to jumpstart from there. It was 2019 March and uh, one year down the line, COVID stuck and we all know that uh, offline came to a grinding halt and we saw a large scale adoption of uh, online at that point in time. So that was something I wanted to touch on and then I'll now hand it over to Dushan to talk more about the India story. Over to you Dushan. 
Dushant, you have been part of uh, Crosstab and then uh, so you have been part of the early adopters or early initiators of uh, online panels. So you will be the best person to talk about this. You are not audible, Dushant. Sorry. Can somebody unmute him? Dushant, we can't hear you. We can't hear you, Dushant. No. No, we cannot. Dushan, we cannot hear you. Uh, I think some technical. No. Dushan, we may want to log off and log in to try that. Sorry guys, technical glitch. Internet is still evolving. While Dushant is uh, logging in, I think just one bit to note here is if you put this in the perspective of, uh, let's call it similar countries around the world, um, what happened uh, is uh, markets like Indonesia and Philippines were very much like India, resisting adopting online research. And they all very, very quickly moved to online research. In some cases, some countries have uh, gone back uh, to face to face as COVID has eased off. But in a couple of cases, they have stuck on and the reduction is very, very minor, which means that they have moved on and jump started uh, to, to online research. Okay, Dushant, you're back. Can we hear you now? Let's see whether this works, the Murphy Law strike. Yes, Perfect. Dushant, we get to you. Perfect. So I was remembering the early days when online used to be like a question mark. Hey, what is the definition of online? People used to book uh, online rail ticket and that would be the definition of online when we would go crazy by the numbers. But obviously what Ravi presented, that now we are seeing a real usage in terms of people, India or Indians being the largest users of Facebook or WhatsApp or Meta or Google, you know, all the OTT brands. So the population is moving towards online as we saw from the numbers that Ravi presented. Uh, marketing has followed suit. As you see from the slide, uh, advertising spends are now on top of the stack against the traditional spends on TV, out of home, print media. So marketing is spending most money on digital methods. And uh, obviously that has created a significant milestone that even MR industry needs to take note of. We can move to the next slide. So as panels or panel uh, industry in India, uh, we started in year 2000, we were looking at offline modes to kind of convert people from in the dot-com era, we were converting an offline respondent to an online respondent. We used to excite people to answer surveys by giving them incentives which were more offline. Uh, so we are using offline uh, methodology to kind of uh, bring people online. I remember sending CD-ROMs of music and movies of Yashraj films to send to people saying, hey, answer a survey, you will get a CD physically shipped to your address. So we would collect a physical address and ship uh, those materials. And we used to face problems like, the thing came back, return problems, pilferage, spillage, people would take out the CD and put something else, right? The challenges that today Flipkart and Amazons of the world face. So we're facing those problems in year 2000, and I'm surprised that even those problems stay remain today. So the digital revolution, what has, what has done uh, for Indian panel companies is that we now recruit primarily from the uh, web applications, and applications which are driving a lot of online traffic. So it could be gaming uh, apps, it could be uh, websites which is catering to for, let's say, uh, recruitment. Uh, even Shadi.com is the area where we could uh, recruit from nowadays. And more and more brands uh, are now making their digital advertising, advertising channels conducive to recruit. So if it is Facebook, if it is things like Nmobi, Glam, LinkedIn, you name it, any online property has a separate 
department to help online companies to build communities from recruit from because they have the profiling data so Dushan, may i ask you one question who were the early adopters which industry or were the early adopters of online research so in terms of the buyers definitely the audience of companies which was already sitting online so it was the tech companies which would typically do online surveys in india in 2000s so because their their audience was primarily online so you have it developers your tech developers typical it audience bfsi audience if you're selling insurance online you would typically want to talk to people who are online so yes very limited in terms of uh, the industry span of who would be using online and the questions was typically again be are you representative how do you manage quality how do you verify the respondent because you are answering without uh, somebody sitting in front of you so the challenge at that time was explaining to the industry that you cannot ask the same face-to-face -face questionnaire and adopt it to a online version you need to make it more intuitive you need to make it self uh, you know self read and self uh, answer kind of a setup and that used to be the challenge earlier whereas now the needle has moved for online companies in terms of the challenge to be how do you excite a respondent to stay in an online survey format we are seeing that uh, with all the advent of online uh, media we are becoming dumber and dumber right we consume media day in day night uh, but our attention span my medical research has shown is now less than eight seconds it is less than a goldfish <laughs> and that is now becoming the challenge today that how do i excite a person who's on a who's on a small screen he's exposed to different medias but i need to get my 20 minute survey into the into the media and and keep the person engaged and uh, excited to answer online surveys so that basically has kind of become the new challenge but what is also helping is the this digital revolution which is making uh, answering surveys more and more popular you do any activity in a day you order something in the morning from zepto blinkit etc etc you need to give a feedback to the delivery person you need to give the rating for the for the item that you brought in and there is a survey that will come up you take an uber you take an ola you have to uh, give ratings any activity any interaction you do whether it is a offline interaction or an online interaction there is a survey there is a rating mechanism there is a review post my post reviews post video reviews uh, you know those kind of things uh, come in now that is making surveys more and more popular so that is helping that trend is helping the online panel industry to kind of say hey more and more people are now uh, conducive to answer uh, online surveys Adishan, one may thing i, I ask you like one to... more question yeah okay sure. so do you think adoption of do it yourself the survey monkeys kind of thing uh, also increasing or is it more the different uh, you know the the way traditional researches are done commissioning and the agency doing the whole thing and giving the report versus you know do it yourself kind of researches so i think the industry definitely has a mixed uh, opinion about whether the corporate research buyer will do it uh, do it himself or herself or lean on the agency and the supplier side uh, ecosystem which has already been built and it is a very set system where i see do it yourself is more and more being used is in the consumer forums right we all are part of our whatsapp groups and i see people not from the industry sending us surveys for their own needs they'll say hey which you know i'm i'm hosting a dinner party you know i need options so they will design a survey in survey monkey send that across in the whatsapp so more and more people are getting used to do it yourself but it's primarily the the larger consumer population which is doing it I would say in the Indian market research industry, it is still uh, the onus on the agency sides as well as the supplier side ecosystem to help interpret the data better, ask the questions in a better way, uh, collect the data in a more representative way, define the quality guardrails. So I do I do see a mixed uh, kind of adoption for do it yourself versus a full service model. Okay, thank Amitabh, you. Amitabh, uh, Amitabh, I just want yes, to add yes, sir. Add so my experience, and we work with over 100 enterprises in India directly, which brand enterprise. My experience is that break the DIY into two parts. One is designing the study and launching it. And the other is the consumption and analysis of the study data. I'm seeing more of clients 
adopting the second part, which is consumption and analysis of data on a DIY, they're okay with that. Yes, the design and launch of the study is something which I feel maybe a couple of years, three years down the line, it's going to be more of a DIY. Also, we are seeing that which is happening is consumer immersions, qualitative. Uh, clients are going and saying, just give me the dashboard, I'll launch it myself and schedule myself. And we are seeing a lot of that happening also on our platform. Yes. So uh, moving on, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so one interesting data point I wanted to kind of show. Yes, uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. This is basically people who, who, 10 years ago, people who used to respond on surveys, right? So 10 years ago, it was primarily desktop. People would not respond so much on uh, mobile devices. And there was a very clear pattern that desktop people, when they respond to surveys, they respond when they walk into our office. So you will see a weekday morning kind of a situation where internet was primarily available in their offices. People walk into their offices. The first thing that they do is on, answer an online survey. On weekends, it would be primary mobile phones. Now, 2023, which is the right-hand side of the charts, this is heat map. The red shows the maximum activity. The blue shows minimum activity in terms of millions of hits happening on a continuous basis uh, on, on the online survey industry. So today, most online surveys are answered on smartphones. That's a big change that has happened. People are hooked onto their little devices and they're answering surveys also on their devices. 65% of our data points show that people are responding on smartphones. And the patterns of response also have changed. Desktop responses are still in the mornings, but mobile, if you see, whether it is during COVID or after COVID, it has stayed pretty consistent across the week, across the day. Primarily, second half of the day is more popular. So you see a lot of reds uh, on the second half, and weekend is basically mornings and evenings response rate. So this is how even the consumers are changing the way they respond to surveys. Uh, and this is one of the things that we wanted to kind of highlight in today's webinar. Yeah, I think it's the same with advertising, which uh, used to be, uh, you know, the first desktop kind of uh, for desktop and TV. But now advertising is made for mobile first kind of lots of advertising are now kind of made for mobile. And similarly, I think the surveys are also now getting more mobile first kind of a thing. Yes, please. Next slide. So uh, this uh, is a question which I think me and lots of people on the client side have uh, is, you know, when should I choose online panel and when should I choose traditional face to face interaction? Because you know, there are, I think there are few studies which you can do online, which can give you one of the best results, faster, quick, agile, everything, but there are things which you should still do face to face and uh, which uh, which are more suited to face to face still so that i wanted to understand from you and uh, i think uh, i'll ask nishant he has been uh, doing kantar for 20 years plus as doing most face to face kind of work and then he has now started a digital first panel kind of business. So he has experience of both. So Nishant, uh, why don't you uh, start on this? Sure. Thanks, Amitabh. So um, so this is this is an important point because there are a lot of myths around, you know, uh, this versus that or, you know, it's always, uh, you know, it's not uh, as black and white as you may think it is. There's a lot of gray. So we'll talk about it. Uh, but if I, if as you asked me, I mean, you reminded me of the history. The first uh, migration of an offline uh, you know tracking that i did moving to online that was back in 2006 in singapore was driven by the client need <laughs> which was very simple this client was a premium uh, face care company and they were realizing that they are not able to get in the offline method enough uh, affluent people because all these people were behind you know closed doors of societies and condos where the where the the poor interviewer was not able to get inside. Um, so they were very quickly realized that that's a huge barrier. And therefore, despite some misgivings, concerns around, you know, because these are very early days, 2006 was early days of uh, online panel, even in place like Singapore, which is, uh, I mean, much more developed uh, in this. 
uh, they went ahead with it. And is there a lot of interesting analysis on how, you know, overall what we saw is the, the findings didn't change, the patterns didn't change, but what changed was absolute numbers. And I think, I think that's over time, that is a well uh, understood thing in the industry. The next one that we moved on was uh, for a one, one of the largest beverage companies globally who had a huge amount of pressure. This is the Japanese client who had a huge amount of pressure to innovate very, very quickly. If, if innovation used to take three years uh, from start till finish in, let's say, a market like UK, in Japan, that was a six month cycle. So they couldn't afford to wait. And they, they were looking at online as a way to do more of the work, cut costs, but also get it done much more faster because you don't need to send out people and get it done physically and all that. But those were the early reasons. What became quite clear um, at that stage is, is they were becoming, oh, for this I do online research, for that I do tra traditional. Uh, but today I will say that uh, uh, there's no one or another. Uh, if, you are, if you're looking at representativeness or true representativeness from a general mass market perspective in India, you might still have to stick with traditional offline research just because online has, despite all its growth and you know more growth coming, at this stage, uh, the online panels are not fully representative of the total population, especially if you're going for lower LSM or L lower SEC and, and, and rural people. At the same point of time, if you are uh, you know, uh, trying to kind of get to a true representation, one aspect you have to realize is that uh, offline is not going to get you the affluent, any, anywhere close to affluent people. Some of them sit on panels, but the big question is how representative are they? Um, uh, you know, um, but, but, but I said at the same point of time, uh, the pit is the offline uh, approaches are not going to get any anywhere close to them because they can't go beyond you know the closed doors. At least in online research, you can you can have a decent representation of them. So overall, I think the point we'll make is you need to ask us uh, ourselves what is the purpose of the study. If it's if it's if you need true representation, think of a hybrid method depending on you know who which which methodology is better for which group. Um, if you are doing something which is very tactical, you are very focused on speed, uh, representativeness is important but not critical, perhaps going with online might work for you. Uh, so there are various scenarios that we can paint uh, and, and uh, you know, a two hour session and a 10 minute uh, you know, mini section within that can't do justice. But you need to start uh, asking the fundamental question saying, who are you want to speak to? Where are they likely to be found? And what methodology is the best one to get there? And yes, if I have to uh, mix methodologies, don't be afraid because, uh, because there are various simple approaches in which you can look at data coming from mixed methodology and still being able to compare and make sense of it. Uh, so just because you have your mixing methodology does not mean you'll struggle on analysis. So yeah, with that, I think what I'll do is I'll pass on to uh, Dushant. Uh, Dushant, if you uh, want to so add. Just, uh, I yes. think uh, my uh, experience, I think if you're doing a long survey like UNA, which yes. requires half an hour or one hour, yes. I think you yes. will still do it with uh, 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 offline methodology because I think nobody is going to sit and answer one hour question. Um, uh, yeah, so that's online. Right. That's and right. other thing which I think is the product testing, which will be, which at best can be mix of both offline and yes. online, where you will place the product and all of those things. And I think so that those are the places where I think traditional methods still kind of work better, but. Yeah. Uh, and I think the, the advantages of online research, uh, let's go to Samir. I think there was, uh, we had to say something, right, on the previous one. So I, I like to wear both the hats. I'm a, I am represent an online panel company and I you know, grew with online, but as a traditional researcher, you know, if it is a CLT, then you have to kind of do yeah. it offline. If it is a sensory test, you know, online cannot send the senses uh, as of now, technology will improve. So any sensory test, if you want to do blind test, taste test you want to do, you have to still go uh, offline. So I agree with Nishant and Amita, both of you, what you said on, uh, <clears throat> there, is no, there is no one answer. Uh, yeah. You have to think through and take advantage of the benefits, which I think Samir will uh, easily talk about and why you know, we should look at the newer methods versus the traditional methods. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just before I jump into this, Amita, 
uh, yes. we are an online we are an online research company right yes. so i'll give you examples of what type of studies we actually say no to when the client comes to us definitely long hour unas yes product testing of perishables and frozen these are that's another thing then why lower scc and higher age group is a challenge in uh, online is primarily because of ability to do self administration and having that literacy to have a 15 minute uh, Q&A happening on a self administrator device that's the, those are the primary areas we have looked at as challenges now so I'll, I'll talk about advantages of online and i don't want anybody to listen to me as saying that online is better i'm not saying that i'm saying it's it's maybe as good as uh you know face to face um we at crown it actually when we started looking at market research five years ago we started saying you know what let's look at it from a purely first principles perspective we are in a geography which is a mobile leapfrog geography the first computing device in a household is a smartphone these are digital native consumers so we said we're only going to make a mobile first consumer pack now that the moment i'm on a smartphone of a person i can do surveys i can do videos i can do chat i can take photographs i can do a hell lot of different data which i can get from the end consumer and that's what we and many other companies in the mobile and you know uh, digital space do the yeah, next slide now the one of the big advantages you get is a 24 7 data collection okay and Dushant showed uh, a similar graph a heat map which was week by week uh, the whole week and, and and very similar numbers somewhere in the afternoon you would see a lot of you know data coming in on smartphone usage and this is just a typical day around 60,000 sessions in a day and you know on that day this is how you see, we see uh, all the sessions spread out uh you know hour to hour but this is a big advantage you get as a 24 7 data collection happening for your research via an online pack next one Diane. and as on the smartphone of the consumer you know you're looking at okay i got the geolocation i got you know ability to integrate to a facebook login or maybe an insta login or a true caller verification i have the otp happening i have a selfie happening a video happening i can take four i can ask for photographs all of that reinforces to say okay this is kavita from khan for age 35 secb the smartphone itself gives you ability gives us all ability to validate a lot of information claimed by the user or the respondent next also the smartphone helps us to say that where exactly this respondent is so when i'm looking at a study i'm saying is it even representative of kolkata or is it even representative of mumbai i could just heat map it across locations because I am on the phone of the respondents and say, you know what, at that time, is this we're talking about Faridabad? Are we talking about Saket? Or are we talking about Morita in Delhi? The other places in Delhi. So that gives you another ability to have representativeness within a study. Next. And obviously, you know, beyond just being 24 seven, it's faster, you get access to part of these respondents like societies, working professionals, you can reconnect easily. So now, now the reconnect part is something which has been utilized by our clients and every client does that very effectively in the online space. 
Then you have the apps. You know, we have our own apps and there are multiple other apps we connect with, we do integration with the pay, you know, Paytm and the UBIs. You have WhatsApp integrations with communities and all of that happening, as well as tracking of all the photographs and validations. You know, okay, you you did a Tata Chroma purchase, send the bill photograph of that. And I know that that's how I'm going to do a survey on you. All of that gives huge advantage, richness, and validity of data being uh, collected from smartphone. Are there, are there challenges? Definitely there are challenges. Uh, is there work still to be done? Definitely a lot of work needs to be done. But I think it's worth to actually start considering online research uh, and the panels are here and many others who are doing a great job. Diana. Amita. Yes. Uh, so mobile research is comprehensive. So let's talk about mobile research uh, and how you are making it interesting. So online panel, it cannot be as traditional as Dushyant also talked about. You cannot put the same traditional questionnaire on the online panel and expect to get the result. So naturally, uh, I would like to understand how you are making survey more interesting for the respondent to fill the survey and as well as you know kind of get to uh, enjoy it while they're doing it uh, so let me, so, let, let me yes. give it a start uh, you know Amitabh so uh, so one thing uh, that we just spoke about uh, but it's really critical that our surveys are no longer competing with other surveys or anything else they are competing against uh, you know for example globally is a TikTok in India you'll have a YouTube reels Instagram there is so many different you know pocket size entertainment options that people have and and in between your survey comes in so it it has to fight against against very very attractive options and therefore we can't just send them the same old style survey and expect that uh, even if people are filling up, they're filling up with the level of attention that we need uh, need it from. So here is an example of, uh, you know, some of some of the opening invites or screens that we have used uh, on our, you know, Agna platform, uh, which which look like piece of content. Uh, they could be they could be moving pictures, they could be videos, uh, they could be sounds. There's a lot of ways where what it does it you know engages the respondent gets them interested and there are various other things that we do to just make sure that we are keeping their attention which i'll talk about you know in us in subsequent sections but the key piece is research does not need to be boring research is in some ways think of it as a mini entertainment and when you redefine research as a way to engage people a way to kind of uh, you know connect with them uh, you will look at it in a very very different uh, lens um, so there are a lot of approaches there are there is approaches towards gamification there is way in which you can don't have to ask questions it could through be a chatbot and chatbots are becoming much and much more intelligent thanks to you know uh, the you know all the advances in ai uh, but i would i would go in and say that uh, if you if you do a mind shift uh, you know complete shift forget about the way research was done Remember that uh, our surveys are fighting against much, much more attractive entertainment options. You, you know, you'll, you'll think about research in very different ways. Yes, we'll always uh, be 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 a bit more, bit more, a bit more kind of challenging for us to compete against them. But at least we are trying. We are not kind of falling back. So I think I think that's the broad point I wanted to make. And I think Samir, uh, you you had few other points you wanted to add on this one, right? Yes, yes. Thank you, Nishant. Um, so when we, you know, when, and we, uh, we are techies, right? We come from, I'm not from research background. So when we actually start, started looking at, at research, we said, you know what? Let's look at the science of research in a purest manner and say that how we utilize that science, because there's a reason it's a 15 minute questionnaire, right? So, you know, th th there it has to be a specific reason, you know, we can ask and question and challenge it as much, but we know that it has a reason. And uh, so when we started looking at it, we said, you know what, how can we build three things very importantly using online self administration into a product? One was that how can I actually reduce fatigue for uh, the user? 
second how can you use the power of smartphone to actually build a more immersive experience for the respondent and thirdly keep the accuracy and the science of research in place so you know definitely surveys and you know all the other different types of uh, questions and were built in into our uh, scripting language but also things like uh, you know immersive experiences within or simulation or uh, drag drops or uh, gamification within the survey um, all those were also built in and those are now becoming very very standard and, and across platforms but to ensure that there is less fatigue and higher excitement is always a challenge every day because when we started honestly in studies weren't there so you know today we have competing with studies as you said so there are a lot of those things we continue to innovate and add more and more that includes the next slide as well which is that how do we gamify it how do we uh, make it more more exciting outside just not within the server but outside the server because we're looking at panel management right if i'm managing a three million people panel i have to keep and i'm not sending them service every day we have 15 day cool off so you know how are we actually looking at keeping them engaged for the next 14 days and and also ensuring a variable reward system so that they don't see that I'm spending, let's say, 10 hours in, in a month, or let's say five hours in a month, I should be equal, proportionately rewarded. Instead, creating a gamified and variable reward system so that it becomes more uh, towards accuracy and less towards you know, effort to reward ratio. Diana, next one, please. Um, I think this is my last slide. Yes, and this I think uh, is on everybody's mind. So, you know, there are lots of people used to say that, you know, surveys used to happen and you when it was offline that, you know, you don't know the authenticity of responses, whether the responses are done by the given the real respondent or whether it is filled up. So those were the concerns in face to face traditional research. Now the same concerns as a client and I, I have heard from other friends of mine that, you know, we don't know whether the respondents are right. Most people feel that 20 percent respondent fill about 80 percent of the surveys uh, you cannot really know uh, whether the answers are given by the right person because the same person goes on and registered on different panels as different respondent and different profiles and things like that so these are some of the concerns i have heard people talk about online panels uh, we, I don't know yes, who would yeah, like to answer. Let, let this. me let me let me start this because uh, this is my passion point. And if I if I look at uh, you know um, what industry has been talking about, if you look at the newsletters coming from uh, you know people uh, uh, you know uh, representing the companies uh, that are representing here, a lot of uh, discussion has happened on uh, is have been happening on quality and quality concerns uh, lately. Um, and I will I will leave aside the the bigger you know the huge problems of you know uh, systemic fraud that might happen or or survey farms and things like that which I think uh, later Ravi will will touch upon. Uh, I I want to focus on assuming that we have reached out to a real person uh, who is responding a survey on on an online panel. How do I make sure that you know I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm getting quality responses from them? Uh, you know and and this is this is where I think. Uh, the challenge that I see is a lot of times when quality or quality related issues are being spoken about or solutions are being talked about, the solutions are very much about tackling the symptoms. Okay, which is okay, I will find the uh, people who are, who are speeding, I'll find the people who are, who are doing fraud. But the big question I always ask is, but what's causing the fraud? What's causing the issues? What is the, and therefore the etiology, which is the core uh, you know, uh, malaise that's kind of leading to those symptoms is something that is a much more tougher one to tackle uh, for the industry. So what are the things to kind of think of? Think, think about who is the respondent? Who, who is this person that is responding to my survey? 
uh, how did we get them? Uh, so if you are uh, working with a panel a company, how did the panel recruit them? So you heard that some of them may be recruited offline, at least in the history. Some of them are recruited uh, online, but how exactly are they recruited online? Uh, were these people attracted by a promise of you know, winning a, a lottery or something else? Knowing those facts will help you really be clear as to who is this respondent that is answering your surveys and the one you're making your decisions based on yeah the other thing you need to ask yourself is how representative is this mindset uh, is this is this a normal person doing this uh, is it typical or is it an odd mindset that is doing doing that and that whatever the answer is you need to ask yourself if that's fitting in uh, with with the objective of the research that you are you are kind of driving it what is their core motivation are they are they driven by you know uh, the wish to make but help make better products or help their opinion being heard um, or are they motivated by just something much more basic and asking those questions yourself will give you clarity as to who am i speaking to and how representative are they beyond that the other piece to look at is what we call as the ri or rx which is the respondent interface and the respondent experience um, we, we talk a lot about ci you know uh, customer experience and customer uh, experience or interface but the reality is in this industry we don't really think ab about as much as we should about what is the experience to the respondent uh, because ultimately we think about what we want but uh, as a marketer or as a, as the person who's advising the marketer what's the number thing number one thing you either have to do yourself or you're being advised to look at think of your customer think of the person you're serving and ultimately in this industry we don't think as much of the respondent because it's all about the client if the client wants a 45 minute questionnaire and i know that is going to be difficult but i will still you know resist, you know resist the temptation to push back on the client and and whoever is on the call if you are someone who's commissioning research ask yourself uh, you know one of the questions i ask my clients is would you give this 45 minute questionnaire, in our case, it tends to be more like 20 minute questionnaire, which is quite long. I would say, would you give it to your wife or a girlfriend uh, and, and, and expect to still have dinner uh, you know, at, at the end of the day? Uh, would, you, would she like it? And, and usually the answer is, no, 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 this is not something I do. Then why would you do that to a respondent? So think about that. Uh, think about how good an experience is. And, and here we are very much talking about the basics, not about delivering an experience that will fight against the reels and the YouTubes of the world, which should be the ultimate amb ambition. The other thing that uh, you know I usually push our clients, I've been pushing for a while, is how relevant are your questions to the respondent? Have you designed a question, keeping in mind all the different questions that you may ask and, and, and forgetting about the fact that it may not be relevant to every respondent? And relevance does not mean that, oh, you're not, uh, you know, demographic relevance but also do you really think this question will engage uh, the respondents um, and, and 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 many times when you ask that question uh, yourself you realize that there's a lot of questions you might be adding that may not be core to what your objective is it's not relevant to the customer and therefore uh, you shouldn't be surprised that the data quality you're getting back was not good enough the final point to note is every data set has a margin of error uh, our industry rewards uh, cutting sample size uh, because that's the way CPI based uh, model works. Um, the more sample size you cut, the faster you will get the results, the cheaper you will get it. Uh, but no one talks about the margin of error. Uh, now, if you look at a 200 sample size, which is seen as a good enough sample size, that has an error margin of plus minus 8%. What that means is you can't differentiate between a 45 and a 60 on that margin. Uh, are you comfortable uh, making decisions based on data that looks different but is not really different? Those are the things to ask yourself. So, what are the what are the things uh, as a, as a cheat sheet? Uh, number one, do you need a representative sample for the study? If you need, you need to really be careful about who are you speaking to, what methodology, and we talked about that before. Is the methodology you've chosen the right one? Not not just online versus offline, but I mean, are you trying to do a qualitative in a quantitative by because you're in exploratory mode? You have if you have more than one or two open ended questions means you don't know the answers and you rather do a qualitative and understand exactly what's going on before you try to quantify it. Uh, trying to, uh, you know, have have tons of open ended. No one likes to type, uh, especially in online. It just leads to a, you know, a much more a bored and and tired respondent. Other piece is, are you asking a lot of system two questions? Are you asking questions that require brains to work harder? And if you are, you're exhausting the person very, very quickly and the data quality deteriorates. Are you clear about the core business issues? Uh, or are you trying to load every single thing that came from 
all your stakeholders over the last month just because the ship is selling only once and you need to load everything in when you do that ultimately you are just uh, you know uh, sacrificing the quality of all your service and the core questions that you need a good quality data for are, are also getting compromised just because you wanted to meet the stakeholder number five that you wanted to end of this thing now finally yeah so uh, i think uh, we, uh, nishant i'll just cut you because then we are short of time so ravi yes. if you can add few things on this yeah, if you can go to the next slide. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so, of course, uh, Nishan spoke in detail on the conceptual side. Uh, I think I'll focus more on how all of these measures are going to have an impact on the data. Yes, there's a lot of focus on fraud. That's the most dangerous. And we are also trying to see if we can go to a representative sample. But the core of it, as uh, Nishan was pointing out, the respondent, what happens there? We're going to a genuine respondent uh, and is fully engaged. But if for example, as basic as the question is not designed well, it can throw uh, a data which can be a suspect one. So this is what I'm going to call as uh, mode effect. Why mode effect? Because as we all know that India is in a transition stage, moving from offline to online. Now, in an offline survey, even if the question is not uh, well designed, there's an investigator to guide the respondent, or if the respondent is actually overclaiming, the investigator can cross check. But that's not possible in online because it's a self-administered mode. That's why I'm going to call this mode effect and kind of deep dive on that. If you can go to the next slide. There are many forms of mode effect. I'll just highlight one, which is what we call as acquiescence bias, the tendency for respondents to say yes. This is not just restricted to online, it's there in offline as well. But the advantage of offline is the investigator can cross check. So, what is this all about? Uh, we all know that we should not ask a leading yes or no question because the consumers will always say yes. And therefore, we ran an experiment last year and it was presented in last year's uh, MRSA seminar uh, where we took two groups of respondents, identical, matched. And for one group, we asked a direct leading question. Other one, we asked more rigorous multi-choice question. You can see that as simple as an eye, eye, eyewear, uh, there's a sharp difference in terms of uh, the data that is coming out. The multi-choice is able to eliminate what we call this overclaim. It's not overclaim, it's acquisitions bias. So mode effect can be handled very well uh, by having a right question structure. If you can go to the next slide. Fraud, the biggest challenge all of us are uh, facing. Uh, it's a range of measures. Of course, all the panelists touched upon various uh, initiatives taken for that. Dynata also follows a range of measures starting with technology tools, uh, which are meant to prevent the same person answering the survey multiple times. Uh, but because of the kind of growth fraud has seen that is not enough therefore we have other measures there are certain measures which are taken before a respondent enters the survey and there are certain measures which are uh, what we call as real time There's something called as quality score it is it is a machine machine uh, 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 learning model which basically takes into account 20 plus data points passive as well as active to identify if a, if a respondent is fit for quality or not so all of these are there but even after that we are not able to get the right quality data that's where manual checks come into picture a project manager or researcher have to review that so that's the uh, perspective uh, if we can go to the next slide now i'll talk about a real project an experiment what we call a research on research we did to understand how all of these measures impact data quality it's one to say that uh, various measures being taken but are they effective is what uh, we wanted to find out this was focused and we therefore we did only in Delhi and uh, Mumbai. We have to keep that in mind because we wanted to run it as an exp experiment. We covered usual topics like finance, durables, and retail. And we did a four stage analysis. First one is we looked at the data, all the data that is collected as such. Then we looked at the QC measures, which is done to remove fraudulent data, not fit for quality data, to see how the data changes. Then we looked at the data if we have to address the mode effect, how does the data change? And finally, if you have to address the data by way of looking at proper representation, how does the data change? So that's the four stage analysis we did. And uh, what is the mode effect we try to address here? Uh, okay, now sorry, Ravi, I have to cut you now. The, uh, but to, uh, coming to my last question uh, to everyone uh, is, uh, what do you see as the future of online panel research? So. Uh, what happens, uh, do you think, will happen uh, in the way surveys are done in India? Will we move completely to online? Will online panel companies become as big 
as the you know the big three big fours like Ipsos, Nielsen, and Kantar of the world. Not that they don't do panel also, but I'm just saying that will there be an integration? Will the what do you see as the future of online panel companies in India? And I think I'm trying to crack it. Yes. Sorry. Yes, sir, so, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be hybrid because both have uh, pluses and minuses. They have to complement each other. Not enough work has been done in terms of how to make hybrid work. I think the future is going to be there. We have to do more research in India on uh, to see, see how hybrids can be effective. That's uh, what I would like to highlight here. Yeah. So yeah, I, would, I would say that. Yeah, I would say the future is going to look like an AI generated interviewer who is having a conversation with a respondent on a mobile phone over a video, taking unstructured data and converting into structured data, including AR as well as immersive passive data experience. This is where India, all the problems we actually also identified will be resolved and India is ready for that type of technology in online. Great. Dushyant, you have any inputs on that? Yeah, so I don't know whether you guys can hear me. Uh, yes, so we can hear I you. I think in near term, definitely uh, uh, online panels will have to solve the challenges that are coming up, uh, whether it is quality representation and kind of invest in, in newer ways to uh, respond to the requirements of the industry. I believe in short term, we will, the, the new data pipes, right? How do you get verified respondent who has purchased or who has consumed a brand or a service? Those verification data points are coming in in terms of a requirement. So complex targeting requirement will make online becoming more and more natural way of doing research in India is what my near term uh, forecast is. And in future, yeah, if we are crunching the entire data process, data collection process, data reading process, and then reporting process, that crunch is happening which will basically mean that it is a fight for all, right? So like you said, will the top three remain top three? I think there are challenges uh, to that uh, from a, a workflow perspective. Now it is up to the, the consuming industry or the corporate researcher to decide whether they want the service model or they want to uh, you know, uh, do it yourself or click of the button. So interesting times when, when this next set of webinar happens, maybe after five years we can meet together and see what we predicted and what happened. Uh, no, so uh, what I believe is that uh, technology is here to stay and technology is going to change things. So OTT, you can see the numbers now. Five crore people were watching or maybe six crore people were watching uh, the final match or the semi-final match of the World Cup on Hotstar. So uh, naturally, you can see that technology is making things different and adoption, the OTT has now become a reality and it's no longer niche so i think uh, going forward online panels will become a very very big part and it's going to stay and become bigger and bigger as we go along with the you know penetration of mobile and internet and all of those smartphones i think that's where it's going to happen uh, we don't have time for questions but uh, diana are there any questions I'm just uh, checking. It has been from Kajal. Uh, many clients think that mix methodology hampers the study outcome. So, what's your say on this? Who will take this? As I mentioned, I can take that. Yeah, go, Sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, I was just okay. saying that, yes, that's, I was saying that's a, uh, in somewhat of a myth uh, because of uh, the historical reasons why, you know, hybrid methodologies didn't work. There is enough backend uh, advancements in how analytics works for us to be able to take data coming from two different sources and combine it together in a way that they're completely comparable. So, yes, I would say that that's not an uh, issue as it used to be in past. Yeah, Ravi. Yeah, I completely agree on that. It's just that we don't have enough research done locally to demonstrate how uh, we can integrate data. And that's the future, I think. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So participant can mail us the questions and we will send it across to the panelists 
and get them answered as we are run out of time it's two o'clock so i would like to thank ravi nishan samir and dushan for taking out time and being part of the panel and talking about uh, something which is happening in the market research industry and very relevant to the market research industry so thanks a lot anybody has question can mail it us uh, mail it to us at market uh, mrsi and we will uh, get it answered by the panelists thanks a lot thank you thank you thanks, thanks everyone info thank you. at mrsi.co.in thank, thank you thank you very much thank you bye bye thank you